this one record. So today we are going to discuss about the sensors that use capacitance principle. So all the, the physical parameters, a physical domain or chemical domain or biological domain, information is converted into capacitance change in the electrical domain. So we are going to get introduction of this capacitive sensor and we will learn the principle and configuration of this capacitive sensor and some of the circuits used to conduct measurement of this capacitance stage. Usually then that cir this circuit will convert the capacitance stage into another electrical parameter. So the circuit will act as a secondary transducer. Yeah, remember the meaning of secondary transducer. So either it converts the capacitance change into voltage change, sometimes it converts it into a period change or frequency change. Later we will study some of these circuits. Some, yeah, not all, because of time limitation, we cannot study all the different types of capacitance sensor and their uh, measurement circuits. Because this capacitive phase sensor is one of the most developed field yeah, in, in sensor world, in the sensor research. Uh, even, even though, like even, even then, there are still many researches yeah, uh, being under, yeah, there are still, that are still undergoing to develop further the application of capacitance-based measurement or sensors in different or novel application. Then finally, we will discuss some of the biomedical application that use capacitive sensor. So capacitive sensor measures electronically the capacitance between two or more conductive electrodes. Okay? So it's separated by dielectric environment. So the key words here, two or more conductive electrodes. So not only, sometimes not only two, sometimes it can use three or four electrodes. Yeah, later we will see. <clears throat> and these electrodes are separated by dielectric environment. Dielectric environment, what is dielectric? Dielectric environment consists of dielectric material. It is insulating, but not only insulating, it polarizes the charges. Yeah, it polarizes the charge so that the charge is separated between positive and negative. The negative charge will be the electrons will be attached to the positively uh, attached a positively charged electrode, while the positive charge in the dielectric material will go to the negatively negative uh, electrode, yeah, the, the cathode. Yeah. So this is what you have learned also in electronics and electrical circuit. So the, the electric environment can be air itself, yeah, in, in the air, because air has permittivity. Later, this dielectricity is expressed in terms of permittivity yeah, in the physical uh, parameter. Liquid also is a direct, some liquids are also dielectric environment or solid dielectric material. And this is what commonly used in the electronic world yeah, to develop capacitance. So capacitive sensors are built with sensing electrodes in the dielectric with excitation voltages and detection circuits to turn capac capacitance variation, capacitance change, into voltage, yeah, as I mentioned also earlier, or frequency or pulse width variation. Okay, the pulse, remember pulse from circuit analysis. Uh, yeah, we have pulse. Basically, pulse is the combination of two step function, yeah, of, of having different polarity, like this. So this width can be uh, can be modulated by the capacitance variation in this capacitive bit sensor. One of the way to uh, <coughs> convert yeah, as a as a secondary producer capacitor change into another electronic parameter. So after it is changed using it is changed in the frequency, for example, then you could use frequency counter to count the frequency. <clears throat> yeah. So then, then from there, you know the correlation between the frequency and the parameter being measured. With pulse rate vari variation, you can also use timer yeah, to, to time the width of the pulse. 
advantages of capacitance based sensor among others uh, it's they are low cost okay you, yeah you just need two electrodes and then you put in you combine them in some in between you put uh, in between the two electrodes two or three or more the dielectric material the dielectric medium they are quite stable simple conditioning circuits so often often there is no need for offset and gain adjustment like that we need in resistance based sensor yeah, in the system based sensor usually you, you you need if you would if you don't want offset then you should use a wavestone bridge as we have also learned in the previous session and if you want to uh, overcome the problem of sensitivity drift you need to have gain adjustment using a programmable gain amplifier for example also we have discussed the one example of its circuit yeah, in the previous session the raw output in the capacitance based sensor span of the signal can be near to the supply rails the voltage rail. now we go to the principle and configuration so basically the basic capacitance consists of two conductive plates like this with having a cross sectional area a and they are separated by a distance d here and in between these two plates or two conductive plates there is an a dielectric material in between them yeah, so the electrical configuration is two closed space parallel plates and hence the capacitance can be calculated from can, can be calculated from this formula capacitance equal to epsilon times the cross sectional area divided by the space between the two electrodes epsilon here shows the permittivity <clears throat> yeah permittivity is how easy for the electric field to transfer that medium so in the vacuum permittivity the epsilon will be equal to epsilon zero epsilon gamma here is the relative permittivity of the media so usually permittivity is can be in a medium can be expressed as the epsilon zero times the relative permittivity or epsilon r or epsilon gamma a is the area of the parallel plates d is the distance between the parallel plates so either of these three if they change then we can have capacitance change okay so for example if the area the interacting area between the interacting area between the two electrodes change then the capacitance will also change therefore we can use for example here to detect uh, lateral motion between the two plates yeah the or shear motion yeah? so one of the plate moves to the right or left the other plate but the bottom plate for example is fixed then the interacting area will change right while the distance between them will remain the same the interacting area a will be will change so as a result c will also change or we can also use capacitance based sensor to detect for example the move motion of one of the plate while the other plate is fixed so in this case the translational vertical motion of one of the plate relative to the other will change the d the spacing between the two electrodes and as a result the c will also change finally the dielectricity the epsilon may also change the epsilon r or epsilon gamma when will it change yeah for example when the there is a change of medium in between the two plates for example if we if this this of, of this uh, if the space between the two electrodes is a channel for example of fluid then we can measure fluid flow for example yeah based on of course the fluid has to have some inhomogeneity so that we will have some variation of, of uh, its uh, epsilon relative uh, relative permittivity within it yeah? then we can measure different part of it <clears throat> or gas sensor or humidity based humidity sensor can also make use of this dielectric change which will result dielectricity change which will result in capacitance change later we will discuss more about those examples 
So as I mentioned earlier, so the space variation between the two electrodes can change. And then we can measure the, uh, what do you call it, here out of plane motion you know, of one of the plate relative to the other, the D change. Since uh, capacitance is epsilon A over D, so C also epsilon A times one over D. So here, as we can see, the capacitance change uh, is the, uh, what you call inversely proportional to the distance displacement change between the two electrodes. And so if we draw the graph, capacitance versus displacement, it will be like this. And so as the displacement increases, capacitance will decrease yeah. in this inverse manner. Okay. Then, as I had mentioned also earlier, the interacting area between the two electrodes can change. Yeah, so if they move uh, laterally towards each other in a shear, like a shear motion within each other, yeah, then there's a D here, but then the interacting area will change. Originally, for example, let me try to draw here. Originally, it was here, but then it moved to the left. It moved then uh, to the left, become this part, this, this. So now, previously, they have larger, originally it has larger interacting area between the two plates, but now the interacting area only becomes this size, this A dash. And this makes then the capacitance will also change. The capacitance will decrease. Okay. However, the difference with, in, with the displacement change as what we have earlier in the previous year when the space between the two electrodes changes, then we have this nonlinear inverse deproportion nonlinear inverse uh, or inversely proportional. In this case, on the other hand, it will be proportional with a negative gradient. So as we can see here, epsilon A over D, then the gradient will be epsilon over D times A. Yeah, epsilon over D. Uh, here, the width, the W here is this width. The width will, that, uh, will not change, doesn't change, but change is this delta or this displacement. Yeah, uh, and it is negative. Why it is negative? Because when the delta is larger, then you have less interacting area. The A becomes smaller. Then capacitance decreases. Yeah. But linearly. Now changes, the change is linear. And finally, when the medium between the two six plates is changing. For example, if this medium also changes, this medium could be anything, could be a solid medium, liquid medium, or even air. Yeah. Then the epsilon between the two plates will change also. And similarly, then the, connect, the relationship is linear, proportional to the change of the epsilon with negative sign here. It means when the displacement is like this, yeah, so the epsilon will decrease because the epsilon of this medium is usually higher than the epsilon of vacuum or epsilon of air, the permittivity of air. So as a result, when it moves to the left, some of the space will be filled with air or with vacuum. So the total epsilon between the two plate will decrease. And therefore, the capacitance will also decrease linearly as a function of the displacement of the medium between the two plates. On other application, the medium may not change position at all, may not have any motion at all, but it is absorbing, for example, absorbing gas or absorbing humidity or absorbing whatever. So will, that will change also the epsilon because it's a porous structure. For example. It will change then the epsilon of that medium, the, the, the permittivity. And as a result, the capacitance will also change. Usually that principle is used for chemical sensor or 
biochemical sensor. Okay, now to, to the measurement circuit. So the measurement circuit acts as a secondary transducer that converts capacitance change into voltage or frequency or pulse width modulation, EWM. Yeah. So pulse operation, the circuits could be a pulse operation, could be an oscillator, can be a simple circuit with CMOS switch inverter or synchronous demodulator circuit. So if it were pulse operation circuit, a single pulse can be used to sample a variable capacitor, for example, microcomputer that read pulse or a train of pulses. This is simple electronic, but usually it has higher noise. For example, the square, uh, the input is square wave. Then you will have a response time. Yeah? So we put a, sim a square wave, a single, a single pulse like this into the capacitance uh, sensor, into the capacitance sensor. As we know that capacitance is a first order uh, component because it is an energy storage component, right? So when a pulse like this is put into it, the system, the capacitance system may not follow immediately. It will have a tau, yeah, the response time, to where one tau is the time where the response reaches 0 0.63 of the steady state value. And this tau depends on the value of the resistor and resistance, yeah, and the parasitic resistance and the capacitance value. So when the, the C changes, the C changes due to the external parameter, either by displacement, as we have done uh, we have learned earlier, cross section in the earlier slide, the cross sectional area change or this uh, separation distance change or medium change, then capacitance will change. The tau will also change because it tau equals to RC, right? We should. Then the, the curve will also change of this, uh, how quick the that capacitance that RC system, having the C capacitance will follow the pulse will depend on the C value, the capacitance value. Okay, from there then uh, by measuring the tau using timer circuit, then we can deduct the value of the capacitance and then know the correlation with the parameter that we are measuring. <clears throat> so another way is to use oscillator. An RC oscillator, such as the 555 IC, this is common IC, I think one year ago, or yeah, or one semester ago, one of you use this 555 IC, right? I forgot, maybe Andy. So it converts capacitance change into change of frequency or pulse width. For example, like this, this connected. This the capacitance width sensor is put here, connected to this resistance, then connected to the trigger and threshold of the 555 IC. The output will then be measured by a frequency counter or time interval. If the output is frequency change, we use frequency counter. If the output is pulse width, we use time interval. Yeah, the frequency will depends on the value of the C. The R is made constant. The frequency will be equal to 1 over 1.38 times R. The cycle times is 1.38 times R. Okay. So for C, um, if the capacitance is proportional to the inverse of D, the distance, spacing distance, yeah, when, when we are measuring the distance, change between the two plates of the, the capacitor, then the frequency will be a function of the, the distance. If the capacitance is a variation of the A, which is then linear, yeah, C, the C change is linear, uh, is proportional, linearly proportional, but a negative, the negative gradient to the change of the air interacting area between the two plates, then the pulse width period will be proportional to that interacting area. Okay. From here, then what the measured frequency or the measured period or time interval will correspond to the change in D and change to A in that capacity. 
the parameter that we are measuring. Another simple circuit is to use CMOS Smith inverter as an RC oscillator, yeah? followed by one shot R1C1 with a smaller time constant, yeah? followed by low pass R2C2, this is a low pass vector with a larger time constant. So the output will be capacitance linear and linear capacitance or one over capacitance linear. Capacitor linear mean then proportional to linear proportional to the capacitor value or linear proportional to the one over C value. The disadvantage, the disadvantage of such circuit is it is not stable with temperature and power supply and may require a floating sense capacitor. Yeah. So like this, the capacitance based sensor is put here as the input, and we have a variable capacitor part two in here to tune this R1C1 time constant, okay? Then it is the input from the capacitive bit sensor is put into the switch trigger. Uh, switch switch inverter, yeah? And then this becomes an RC oscillator. The output here will be equal to VCC multiplied by a constant times R1C1 divided by uh, RC. Okay, so we can tune uh, how the, the range of the output voltage. Then another example of secondary transducer circuit for capacitance sensor is to use um, demod demodulator circuit, synchronous demodulator circuit. A square wave excitation voltage V coming from here feeds the variable capacitance in which either one of them can be the sensor or both can be the sensor, C1 or C2 or both. Then uses a CMOS switch here. A high impedance unity gain AC amplifier feeds the switch and also an inverter is an inverter. Switch output is an accurate the modulation. The possible noise come from the narrow spikes due to the switching transient yeah, because of uh, the switching uh, action, then there will be some spike. But it can be eliminated in the low pass filter. Spike usually contains a high frequency component, as maybe you are now learning in signal and system, right, with Paolia. With a spike, yeah, uh, an impulse usually contains high band, wide bandwidth, also high component, high frequency component, then we can use low pass filter to reduce that noise coming from this uh, switching uh, position, switching uh, action. The advantages of such circuit is that out of band signal components are eliminated in this low pass filter. And this is important when there are noise from power line harmonics or other Talks. The E output here will be equal to the C1 divided by C1 over C2. So this is a capacitance divider, yeah? circuit, yeah? impedance divided circuit. Okay, let's now describe some biomedical applications. The first one is capacitive pressure sensor. Yeah? A pressure sensor that use capacitance change to indicate the pressure change. In previous example, we have given this, we have discussed about this, yeah, a pressure sensor also, but uses resistor, a resistance-based pressure sensor. You have here a tangential sensor here and radial sensor on the other part. So um, if you have uh, number, then this one will, if it is bulged like this, if the here yeah, the radial sensor, radial resistor here will undergo a negative, yeah, negative pressure. Uh, sorry, negative strain. Negative strain. The tangential resistor on the other hand, yeah, in, with the relationship of new, remember Poisson ratio. So the so new then it means in the 
in this direction yeah, in this direction towards the screen or or out of the screen in the tangan sense resistor will will undergo positive strain yeah, positive strain or tensile okay or vice versa if if the, the bending of diaphragma is like this then we will have the radial resistor undergo positive uh, strain while the while the uh, tangential resistor will undergo negative strain so here then we can put them in configuration like this so remember i think yesterday uh, uh, Ezra was asking about this yeah what uh, what is the advantage of using the uh, what do you call it the Taibo diaphragma yeah, or butterfly tie diaphragm? Because if you use the same the same radial resistor here, and the other one is at the middle. We also have similar result like this. Two resistors are in compressed compressive strain. Two resistor the other two resistor are in tensile strain. So this we can put this. The tensile strain resistors put opposite to each other. The compressive strain resistor are also put opposite to each other, and then they they will amplify, yeah, because uh, of the formula of Wheatstone Bridge. But as you can see here, then the circuit is not that easy. You have to put four, right? You have to put four resistors. In order to measure the deflection of the membrane of the diaphragm, if you use a capacitor transducer instead, it will just be one single plate. Yeah, the the moving capacitor, the moving uh, diaphragm will become one of the moving electrodes or moving plate. While the other one, uh, you can put another on the bottom, uh, another plate which is fixed, yeah, which is uh, not moving okay so we then measure the separation distance change between them which will result in capacitance change so this is for example the theoretically calculated experimental measure value of capacity versus the pressure for uh, cpt1 so this is the structure first top view this is the transduction capacitor uh, enclosed by a glass cap the glass cap is like this this is from cross-sectional view the capacitance, the, the gap yeah, between the two plates are this one, a very small gap. Yeah, here. This top plate and the bottom part is the bottom plate. So the bottom part is quite thick, so it is uh, but it can still it can still bend. This is the actual photograph of CPT1. This is publication from 1980 so this is quite uh, old uh, this old invention monolithic capacitive pressure sensor with pulse period output yeah so this one like this so then the electric the electronics can be put at the same chip at the same silicon chip yeah so this the electronic uh, that one that we have discussed that whose output will be a pulse period is like this. Uh, this is using a biasing circuitry, Smith trigger oscillator, and the output stage. This is using bipolar junction transistor circuit, yeah, which I believe you had learned in semester three with Paul. Yeah. Okay. So this is the relationship between the period of the pulse resulting from this output. Yeah. As a function of the pressure in millimeter mercury. Okay, then the application of this capacitive pressure sensor, this is another capacitive pressure sensor, but more recent in 2010. Now it uses mercury ball and has higher sensitivity of 2.24 microfarad per kilopascal. Yeah, to it. The plates are formed from this aluminum electrode and the bottom as the bottom electrode, the bottom plate, 
and Mercury as the top record. Okay, then the Mercury can become small, yeah, like this. Yeah, the Mercury can become balls or can flatten, depending on the pressure. Yeah, the pressure is exerted on this Mercury. Mercury is basically in room temperature, uh, temperature is liquid state. Yeah, in the liquid state is liquid metal. Okay. So when it is connected to this corrugated diaphragm with aluminum ring. So I think, yeah, the electrode is not the mercury. So the mercury acts as uh, conductive yeah? because the, the, there is a terminal here and this connected to this aluminum ring and this corrugated diaphragm. Okay, so one is this connected to atmosphere pressure, then this another pressure. Yeah, depending on the pressure, it will the mercury drop here can be either in the ball form or could be in as a flattened form. Yeah, then based on that, the capacitance will change. This is comparison of the new sensor, the most important two types of pressure sensor: capacitive and piezo resistive. So sensitivity for piezo resistive pressure sensor is 25 millivolt per kilopascal, while the capacitive pressure sensor using the previous method, uh, just simple plate, 0 0.2 nanofarad per kilopascal. And this is not that high, so it means uh, how many? 200 picofarad, picofarad per kilopascal. While the new sensor, uncompensated here, using this mercury drop as the amplifier. Could reach up to 2.24 microfarad per kilopascal. However, the drawback is it is nonlinear. Capacitance based sensor for pressure measurement is usually nonlinear, while using piezo resistive sensor, we can have linear. This is pressure hysteresis. So, how remember hysteresis, how different it is from when the range of the pressure is sweep from low value to the high value and then sweep back from high value to low value. Okay. We see here, however, that the new sensor has better hysteresis performance. It has less than 0.05% full-scale uh, output, okay. so it's full-scale output. While the base resistance pressure sensor has hysteresis up to one plus minus 1% 1 at SO. Temperature hysteresis, on the other hand, the ca conventional capacity pressure sensor is the best, plus minus 0.5% only of the full scale output. Another, not that recent, but almost the same time, yeah, 2007, this is using flexible material as the membrane. And it could reach 10 to 14 picofarad per millimeter mercury, so a bit uh, less than this one. Yeah? Of course, much less than this one. This is 2.24 microfarad, while this is picofarad. So the diaphragm is this one here, using poly polyamide. PI is polyamide, polyamide. Yeah, uh, and we have gold layer here, another gold layer here, which acts as electrode. And, and in the middle, in between, we have EDMS called dimethyl which is also a flexible material. So this, I believe, EDMS acts as the dielectric medium, the dielectric medium. So upon pressure, then the distance between the two cooled electrodes will change, then the capacitance will also change. So this is in this paper, an implantable capacity pressure sensor for Biomedical application. So this is the fabrication in a single uh, wafer, yeah, in a single silicon wafer. So, where do where do they apply such a flexible capacitive pressure sensor? They apply it in this uh, application to measure the interface pressure between the cuff electrode yeah, and the nerve trunk to monitor the health of the nerve tissue. Cuff electrode is used to apply the electrical stimuli on motor nerve fibers that innervate muscles or to record neural signal from peripheral 
nerves. It is an important component of neuroplasticity system. Yeah, to excite motoric neuron to move, yeah, it usually used in rehabilitation device. And then that in the pressure between that cuff electrode and the nerve trunk must be controlled because if it is too much, then it will hurt the subject. So here it is made flexible so that then it can unwrap the, the cuff electrode, the sensor can un unwrap the sciatic nerve. Yeah. So this is quite in, in ingenious design. Where it is people the Chiang at all. 2007, implantable capacity pressure sensor for biomedical application. Another biomedical application is okay. Time is up because then we can continue in uh, next week. Yeah, we will discuss further about.